I found this feather earlier on today and I wanted to see how I could get a, a close-up shot of it because I, I love the detail in there and this one in particular has got lots of, uh, of spots and an interest in it. Problem is with a smartphone camera, it's not very good at focusing very close to things. There's this minimum focusing distance thing. You can buy macro lenses for them but they can be a bit expensive and you might not use them all that much. So I'm going to show you a way where just with a little drop of water I can get super close-up magnifying glass like shots with your smartphone. So you can see the problem here. I was going to take some pictures and you know these are still quite nice pictures but they aren't sharp in any way. I'm, they're not revealing any of the detail of this feather. Let's see what difference a little drop of water can make. So I've got a little pipette here and the front facing camera just there. I'm just going to put a single drop of water over the top of it. Make sure your phone's waterproof or at least heavily water resistant before you do this. So now what I can see when I bring my feather in, there, it now starts to focus. It wasn't doing that before. I still need to tap on the screen as I was trying to do before, but now I'm able to see these details and these lines on the feather. It's still quite, quite dark, so let me just angle it a little bit. There we go. So a few things to notice here there's a really shallow depth of field on this image and that is all to do with the optics of this of this little bead of water and you can use that to, to to good effect and it creates a real depth to the image as well so let me just angle my feather like this I'm seeing some of the dots choose which bit you want to be in focus and you can use the you can use the exposure on the phone so all I'm doing is just tapping and then pulling down just to lighten it up a little bit choose which bit I want to be in focus and then tap again just lighten it a little bit there we go I'm not filling the frame with my with my feather so I've still got some negative space which is quite interesting as well but look at all this lovely detail now I don't have my phone in black and white mode here. This is just the black and white of the of the feather. And I think that that contrasty looks really uh, really interesting too. Let's have a look. let's turn it around a little bit and see if we get anything on the other side. There we are. Now because you're working in such close up with your subject any movements get magnified and to try and make this as sharp an image as possible just going to hold it in a different way. I'm just going to hold it down to the side. Oh, lovely. I still think about composition here. There are some strong lines as part of this feather and see if, see if you can create those leading lines that draw the viewer's eyes in. There we go, that's beautiful. I think we've got some lovely shots there. Let us have a little review so I'm just cleaning off that water from the camera lens so we don't spoil the phone right let's have a look this was the first shot of the feather that I took without my water drop macro lens and you know as we understand it's it's pretty blurry um, I, I don't dislike it it feels very abstract uh, I could certainly see me using this as a as a phone home screen or something but it wasn't the shot that I was after. This, however, was, and I'm really excited by this shot. This shallow depth of field that you get with a macro lens, especially a water drop one, means that only a very fine sliver of this shot is actually in focus, but it, it's at a really interesting point, just where the black of the feather mixes with one of those white dots. I think that's a really, really interesting image. And this one here has come out really well too and again that shallow depth of field means that that what might be the point of interest the kind of line that goes along on this diagonal of the feather 
that isn't what's in focus, it's just over that hill. And what it's doing is it's drawing the viewer's eye deeper into the photo. The other thing of note here is that almost half of the image isn't my subject at all. This is negative space, just, just the blurry background. But that provides this really rich contrast between the feather and not the feather and compositionally just works. My eye wants to go in and find out more about this feather. Now here, there's more of the image that's in focus. Uh, and I'm really seeing these ridges along the feather in such detail. And remember, this is a drop of water that's enabling this detail. And finally, this one, rather than going across, this one shows these ridges going upwards. And again, just to this lighter line, which is the, the vein of the, of the feather. I like all of these images in different ways. Experiment feathers are a great subject for this, but maybe it could be a leaf, maybe it could be a flower. I think that one of the reasons this is successful is because it is black and white. And it's not that I've shot in black and white, it's just that the, the feather uh, are these dark colours, but that creates that extra sense of drama that makes these really, really successful. <laughs> Oh.